Hi, this is Gilly, Radio Prepper. Today I'll make an antenna, a shortened 40 meter antenna for portable radios. Now, you know, I've been using military radios that use a whip, you know, often a 2.5 to a 3 meter whip. 2.5 for the PRC320 and I have one for my TRC372 that's uh, 2.8 meters. So I went to uh, Thingiverse, and, uh, which is a site that has a, it's a repository basically for uh, 3D designs, uh, 3D printed designs, and I found a coil to be used with the uh, AT271 antenna. I think it's the AT271. This is an antenna, very well known. This is a copy, but I have an original. It has a few elements that can deploy to uh, two point, about 2.8 meters, 2.88 meters. The end of it is this uh, large thread here. And there is an adapter that can go on it that makes it a 3 8 by 24 thread. So uh, used with actually my uh, Chameleon Hybrid Micro and uh, other systems that I built, uh, that I've built uh, since uh, I got it. The radio I want to use it with, although it can be used of course with other radios, but is the uh, TRC372. That's a French military radio and uh, it's a pretty darn good one. It's not the best, it's plastic mostly, there is some metal here on the sides and it has an SO, is it 239? <laughs> I never remember. It has a connector for an antenna here, a ground, a banana, and this nut here is actually for the antenna I just showed you. It's the same diameter thread. So the antenna plugs in directly into the radio. Of course, you know, a 2.8 meter whip is not going to be tuned for 40 meters. Uh, you'd need a 20 meter antenna for that, or you know, at least a quarter wave, 10 meters. So it's you know not the best. The radio has an internal tuner, but again, performance is not going to be great on 40 meters, and that's why I wanted to make a coil. Now, a coil or an inductance allows you to shorten an antenna and you know kind of make the radio believe that the antenna is actually longer. The one I found on Thingiverse is just made for this antenna, so it's pretty awesome. Um, the only problem that I have is that it requires to, well, it requires to use uh, nuts, you know, 3 8 nuts to plug in the antenna on one end and something else on the other end. The only thing I have are those adapters. One here is for the antenna itself, 3 8 and with the uh, large uh, threaded base here. The other one is a socket which has a, um, a brass center insert here insulated from the uh, the rest of it. So that's the center connector. So that's going to be the bottom of my coil. And I want to put this on top of my coil with the coil in the middle, of course. Well, it's going to be at the bottom of the antenna, of course, which is not the best location. The best location for a coil is actually in the middle. This should work with the uh, 3D printed design. The only problem that I have again is that I don't have the nuts. So I'm going to epoxy these connectors into the end caps. And I'm not sure that's going to be strong enough, so we we'll just have to see. With this guy, I'm going to be using a double male adapter. So male on this end and male on the other end, which is going to plug in into the radio. Short whip antennas are used by the uh, military on HF, uh, even the lower bands, for pretty much uh, local communications. But sometimes they will surprise you and result in very long contacts. I once made a uh, contact from the north of France to uh, I think Carolina, North Carolina with my PRC320 and the uh, 2.5 meter whip so <laughs> that was amazing and uh, it does work sometime but it's just not reliable. Now I'll have to make a video sometime about using HF for local communications. It has advantages but it also has drawbacks in the way that uh, uh, people can hear you <laughs> long distance away. And sometimes that's what you want and sometimes it isn't. But uh, I'm hoping that this antenna will, uh, will first will, will be strong enough with the epoxy and second will uh, allow me to make, uh, you know, some uh, local, regional and, you know, who knows, maybe long distance contact. So wireform.stl and we see the coil here. 
Now I have to set up my uh, the type of uh, filament I'm going to use. I know the uh, precision has to be 0.1 millimeters, so you don't need any support for the uh, the threading. And all the rest I'm going to leave just about the same. 30% um, infill, that's correct. I had a printing <laughs> temperature. I think it's 270 uh, for this type of filament. I'm using PLA plus build plate temperature. Uh, I'm going to put 75 degrees Celsius. That's pretty high, but that's what's required for this filament. And first layer, 80 degrees. So that should do it. Um, uh, our printing speed, 50, uh, that should be okay. And uh, I do want retraction, that's fine. Print cooling, yes, 50%. Support, no. Uh, and I want, do I want a skirt or a brim? I think I want brim. Brim width, uh, seven millimeters. That's going to help the, uh, the form to stick to the plate. So that's a little brim here that's going to be around. And let's see if I slice it now. And it's going to tell me how long it's going to take and how much filament it's going to use. So I'm afraid that's going to be a pretty long print because of the precision required. 11 hours, <laughs> 55 minutes. Okay, well, that should put me at almost 2 a.m. in the morning. So, um, all right, let's save it to disk and, uh, and print it. It's 180 degrees. Uh, you see the, the hole for the nut here the hexagonal hole which I'm going to plug whoops okay so zero back to zero degrees and I just created this form here which I'm going to set in the middle all right so I'm going to group that and now it makes only one object now I want the hole to be pretty tight so 3 8 is about 9.5 millimeters but I'm going to uh, make a actually no I don't I want a hole and I want, oh, I'm going to make it nine millimeters. Nine millimeter hole. Going to put that in the middle. Going to lower it a bit, so I'm making sure it's making a nice hole. I want to center it as well, so I'm going to, again, select all, click on the uh, alignment tool and align this way and this way. And that should give me a nice hole. So, yep, I'm going to group that and we'll see the hole. There it is. Now, I want some space here around to fill in epoxy. So, I'm thinking like a three millimeter rim hole around. So, that would be nine plus six. That's 15 millimeters. So, I'm going to make another hole here and I'm going to make it 15 millimeters. And basically it's going to make a uh, rebatement, is that a word? <laughs> All right, so 15 millimeters, and I'm going to uh, put it a little bit higher. So I want five millimeters from the bottom. And that's just an estimation. I, I'm, you know, I don't know if that's going to work fine, but uh, all right, so uh, we are going to align that once again, here and here, well centered, group, and that should give us a hole. And that will give me space here to fill in epoxy around the threads, and, and hopefully it's not going to move. Here I'm in Cura, I'm going to uh, take that off, my, uh, my coil that I did um, now I'm opening the oh no I don't want that I want the one I just modified so uh, let's uh, where is it it's in downloads coil cap STL open and here it is and that one I'm tempted to put more than 50 percent I mean 30 percent infill because I want it to be very strong so I'm going to put 50 percent infill uh, which is pretty uh, which is a lot I could put 100%, but it's going to take forever. So, and we don't need to use that much plastic, really. Uh, okay, all the rest is good. I'm not going to do any retraction, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. I certainly don't need a brim or anything like that, because it's this is uh, touching the plate enough. And the rest is about the same. It's the same filament, so let's slice it. And I'm suspecting it's going to take uh, well, three hours, about three and a half hours. 
So I have to make two caps. <laughs> that's uh, about seven hours plus uh, 12 hours. That's 19 hours total. So let's save it to disk and we're done. This is so slow. If I had the space though, I'll tell you, I would buy a second printer. And this is what I woke up to. Very nice. I need to uh, hurry up now because <laughs> I'm going to the uh, Col de Vence to test it with my buddies. So <laughs> I don't have much time. I hope it's going to be enough for the epoxy to set properly. And here's the cap with the coil. I'm going to put epoxy on that all around and glue it on. I'm going to hold this for five minutes. All right, I'm going to thread the wire through the hole here and put the antenna socket right here. I'll put some weight on that. That's a Klansman battery. <laughs> And uh, it should be okay, all right. Let's thin the wire here so I can uh, solder the uh, enamel wire on it. All that copper is acting as a heat sink, so my soldering iron has a hard time. Now I'm going to put the wire. It's a uh, one millimeter enamel wire, and I'm going to put it as tight as I can around the coil form. I will use my soldering iron on the other side. Just add some solder, that should help. I would say that's a win. <laughs> and I'll see if I have some uh, heat shrink tubing to put on that. All I have is red, but eh, you know, who cares? Whoop, this is just an experiment. Otherwise I would try to get something more um, discreet, I guess. Oh, made a hole. Take two. I want to get one of these uh, surface mount component uh, hot air station. Oh no, one more time. You know what, I'm gonna put two, two of those on it. Almost succeeded. Almost. Just gotta hold it further. Second layer, a little bit further away. All right, so Patrick is holding my antenna here. I'm ready to test with the antenna analyzer and uh, I'm not expecting the uh, this coil to be, uh, with the antenna to be resonant exactly on seven megahertz, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, I just, uh, if it's close enough, that's that's good. Infinite SWR on 40 meters, and that's not good. Might be the adapter that's not working. Uh, the contact might be too thin for the uh, connector. Well, I plugged it in, we'll see. Uh, SWR of 20 to 1. <laughs> it's just not, I don't understand. The connectivity is good. Go figure. Reception uh, seems to be good. Apparently there's a contest going on. I'm tuning it now, we'll see if I can get a, uh, some output. Yeah, a little bit. Um, oh, it's really not much. Uh, practically nothing. Down. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work at all. Uh, and I'm at a loss. I'm going to do a scan of the whole HF band and see if maybe there are some dips and maybe it's resonant on another frequency, but definitely uh, not on 40 meters. Here I'm using a 10 meter counterpoise and look at that very sharp dip, uh, slightly above 9.3 megahertz. Incredible. All right, let's try to tune without the uh, counterpoise. That is definitely better, but it's it's really not enough to be good. Without the uh, counterpoise, the scan does show a clear dip on the uh, 40 meter band, but it's still about six to one. Something is clearly happening there though. Foxtrot for Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. And I say Hotel Charlie Webaker. 
Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee. So I took out, I folded one element at the end of the antenna and it does work a little bit better. I'm hearing some uh, British stations now. That's why I call. Reception is good. Uh, sure, they might not hear me. It has very short antenna. Tango Mexico 100 Oscar Romeo Papa. Tango Mexico 100 Oscar Radio Papa. F4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee. Delta Lima 7. Delta Lima 7. Question mark. Call again, please. All right, change of plan. I'm going to use uh, Frederick's Chameleon. And uh, this is not the hybrid micro, that's the big one, with the uh, 5 meter whip. So that should work a little better. CQ40, 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 Tango Mic 100, Oscar Radio Papa. Tango Mic 100, Oscar Radio Papa, QRZ. F4 Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee. Uh, sorry, very, very QRM. QRM here is a 5657, 5657 QRM, and your session is not audible. Thank you very much, bye. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee. Have a good day. Much higher output with the uh, chameleon. Boom. All the way up. Bonjour, ici F4 Whisky Bravo Yankee, F4 WBY, en portable dans la région de Nice, dans les montagnes. Vous me recevez Ouh, c'est difficile, hein, c'est tout petit. F4 Delta, Delta Bravo Yankee, c'est bien ça Whisky Bravo Yankee, Whisky Bravo Yankee, QSA Oui, F4 Whisky Bravo Yankee, bonjour cher OM, merci d'avoir répondu à l'appel. Ah, vous arrivez tout petit, hein, 45 ici en département de la Moselle. Indicatif spécial pour les fêtes de la Saint-Nicolas et l'opérateur se nomme Pascal. F4 Whisky Bravo Yankee, Tango Mexico 5, 7 Sierra Tango Novembre. Merci beaucoup Pascal, merci beaucoup. Hein, et, euh, une très bonne journée de bon DX. Ici je suis en portable, portable avec un appareil euh, militaire euh, Thomson CSF. TRC 372 en portable dans les montagnes à altitude 900 mètres, 900 mètres au nord de Nice. À vous. Not sure gonna hear that. Ah, à un moment, c'était bien monté, ça a chuté. Je ne sais pas si vous êtes encore QSB. Euh, en QSO, mais vous étiez à un moment monté 56. Hein, donc, j'ai quand même pris où vous étiez en portable. Dans le 06, il me semble. Donc, mes amitiés à vous et à votre cœur familial. Vous avez toutes les infos de l'activation sur QRZ.com. Mes amitiés à vous et à votre cœur familial. Et bonne fête de fin d'année. F4, Whisky, Bravo, Yankee, Portable. Tango, Mexico 5, 7, Sierra, Tango, Novembre. Bonne fin d'après-midi. Merci Pascal, merci Pascal. Une bonne fin d'après-midi. 73, 73 de F4, Whisky, Bravo. Yankee, bonne journée. Bye bye, Tango Mexico 5-7, Sierra Tango November. Now I'm going to try with the antenna directly plugged in into TRC-372. And I kind of doubt that's gonna work any better, but we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll add the counterpoise as well, which didn't work before, but uh, maybe this time. And we'll see how that does. Surprisingly, with the antenna directly on the radio, it's uh, much better than before. Just as good as the uh, chameleon, it seems, or maybe a little bit less. But I can still tune it pretty well. Uh, 
Merci beaucoup, c'est toujours Pascal, je suppose. 55, bien reçu, hein. j'utilise une antenne fouée de 2,80 m. Hein. Antenne fouée de 2,80 m avec 20 watts, euh, appareil portable militaire, QSL Oui, QSL, cette fois-ci, je vous entends mieux que tout à l'heure. Hein. 20 watts avec un appareil militaire, oui, mais ça passe un peu mieux que tout à l'heure. Hein. Bon, après, euh, avec la propagation, on ne sait jamais. Vous, alors, redites-moi voir, vous êtes où exactement alors, QTH, QTH, Col de Vence, Col de Vence, dans les montagnes au nord de Nice. Nord de Nice, 900 mètres d'altitude, hein, 900 mètres d'altitude, QSA Oui, QSL pour le Col de Vence. Merci, bonne continuation, bon amusement au portable. Et bon, bah, je vous dis à bientôt, c'est Pascal, hein, c'est Pascal, hein, je suppose. Oui, c'est Pascal, merci encore pour le report. Bonne soirée de F4 Whisky, bravo Yankee. Tu you like my hat <laughs> Very surprising results. Uh, I'm very surprised that the, uh, the coil didn't uh, turn out to work uh, quite so well. I was very surprised at how narrow the bandwidth was. Uh, you saw that on the graph. Uh, and this coil is just... I don't think I'm going to be using it, actually. And that's... It's a partial fail. <laughs> and surprisingly, the uh, 2.8 meter whip that I have here uh, directly plugged into the radio in the antenna base that's made for it, I guess, no surprise, works better because of the internal circuitry in the radio that's, you know, built for this antenna, basically. There is an adjustable inductance in there and you can tune it perfectly for the whip. And it does work. And I made a contact with the station on the uh, German, close to the German border, and uh, so sometimes we want to reinvent the wheel and make something better when in all actuality the radio already has the correct circuit for this uh, for this whip and it does work fine and uh, you know that's how it should be F4 whiskey bravo Yankee Oui merci de votre appel Florida 4, Whisky, bravo Yankee. Donc bonjour à vous, 73, F4, W, BY. 73, merci de votre appel, Vita 8, JZ2, 4. The uh, chameleon uh, worked well also, of course, uh, uh, but uh, this not. Oh well, it's all about having fun and experimenting. Maybe some people can comment uh, on why this didn't quite work. It didn't quite work, or well, it didn't work at all with the counterpoise, uh, with a more than, you know, very extremely high SWR. Surprisingly, without the counterpoise, it was about a 6 to 1 on, uh, on 40 meters. So, go figure. I, I don't quite understand what's going on there. <laughs> but uh, hey, it's, uh, it's fun to experiment and, and learn new things. And maybe if I dig a little bit deeper into this, I'm going to learn. Uh, I'm going to learn a few things, and that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, I've never really used coils before, and uh, maybe I'll try some other models. I don't know. Maybe I think I might make one that's adjustable. You know, with a, a little uh, alligator clip that you can choose. Uh, you know, basically shorten the inductance with a long wire, and we'll see how that works. It takes a long, long time to print. Uh, this was 19 hours, so <laughs> if I print a bigger one, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but... Alright guys, so that was a lot of fun, it's getting cold again, I'm going to try to make uh, maybe a couple more contacts. Have a good one! This is so slow. Still more interesting than watching FT8, but uh, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Wham! Just lost a thousand subscribers. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking, guys.